Call this meeting of Wilhite King Fiscal Court to order on the 25th day of April 2023 at 5 p.m. Um, I'm going to to ask uh, Kenneth Callaway to lead us in a prayer and place the flag. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day you give to us and this opportunity to be here tonight. I pray that you would bless our efforts and, and give us the wisdom we need and, and help us lead our county. In your name I pray. Amen. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, did I say 22? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Ann Melton, would you come up here in front of the thing? Jason, you want to go with Join me up here. Okay. I'm not in trouble, am I? Yes, you are. <laughs> Got this a warrant for you. Uh, Adam, stand by. I'm ready. <laughs> now, uh, on behalf of Governor Andy Bashir, you are now commissioned as a Kentucky Colonel, State of Kentucky. If you chose, you could use the title Colonel in your name anywhere you want to use it. Oh, is I that higher you. than a judge? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought, okay, I I've thought got you already hired a judge. I mean, <laughs> hey, I've got one of these that's signed by Governor Bird and Jones, so okay. we'll take them there. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Can you take Can you take Okay. Come back, Jason. One, two, three. Okay, this does mean a lot because both of my parents were colonels. All right. Uh, before you, you have the uh, minutes of the uh, April 11th. 2023 uh, meeting. The motion to approve. So moved. Motion Second. by Larry Morphew. Second. Second of Kent Callaway. Any questions, corrections, additions? Any questions, corrections, additions? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Pass. Before you, you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers. Including a late list and a late late list. Late late list just has one. What's is that the the, the, the sheriff's office? Yes. Late, late. I'll make the motion to accept the late list. Second. Motion by Jason Bullock, mm -hmm. second by Larry Morgan. Is there any discussion on the bills, claims, payments, and transfer? Any questions on the bills, claims, pays? Papers and transfers. Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. It passes. Uh, before you, you had some information on the health insurance proposal that we have to approve every year uh, for the 2023 2024 year. Uh, I'm going to Ann explain this to you. Uh, the health insurance did go up 8% this year. Um, the actual plan itself, none of it has changed other than the cost of it. So you've got a, a couple of options. You can leave it the same. Right now we have a free plan. Um, you would have the option to have the employee pay $5 a week. I don't, that's up to you all, whatever you all want to do. <coughs> Motion approved as is or to go back and not charge the employee anything. But this is just a little step into it, and we know uh, my biggest desire has always been to have one free plan <coughs> for our employee, employees. What we've gone up as high as we go on deductibles to make the cost down, and now for us to continue to maintain it long term, we need to get started with that small contribution to the employee, $5 a week. I'd like to see us if it possible to keep it like it is because benefits is what get draws your uh, good employees. 
I think we may could have handled it another year, but there's going to be eventually a time that it won't be feasible to do. It's easier to start small. What What is the current cost to the county? Well, the, for our new rates for 23 24, we pay 10000 not well, for 23-24, it'll be $10,915 per employee. We have 97 full-time employees, so that's $1,058,700. So what would the savings be at the, if we were to collect $5 a week for those? Well, it's not just that one $5 because if you can see there how, we, how it's presented, you have each category that went up some. So I think in the judge looking at it, do you let that one category be free and then everybody else have to pay? Or what, were your, what was your thinking on that? You see the two yellow columns there? Yeah. Uh, Kenneth said, if you, if you don't do anything, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm repeating what he said. He can say no if he didn't say this. But he said it was rather better to start small than to wait until we absolutely had to do it and then come down with a big, big amount. The annual cost, are the, is the HSA dollars built through that annual cost as yes, well? Yes, it is. Okay. The, the basic plan has a $2,000 HR card that goes with it. Um, and for the most part, I think most of our employees, it works well for them. Um, that was 2000, you said? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I always, whenever we have an employee come in, I always use myself and my husband. If you've got, uh, my husband goes to the doctor every three months. He take, you know, has some health issues. So he needs to be on that enhanced plan. But for people who don't have to go a lot, the basic plan works very well. And then the Anthem, the enhanced plan, has a $500 card built in that employees can use for lab work, x-rays, um, $500 towards an MRI, and that cost, Kenneth, is built in there too. Okay. And we kind of looked at, originally looked at, and I talked to Anne a little bit, we were, she was thinking we were like $10, and we, we did go like that. Yeah. Feasibly $5 would be doable and you could probably even we could probably maybe take it one more year at but it's getting it's going a eight percent increase was a pretty big increase yeah well i'm throwing it out there for somebody to make a motion on doing it one way or the other because uh, uh i actually thought it was a i thought it was not a my first desire but i think it's going to be impossible for us to continue to have the one free plan which has always been my goal. And we've done it for 12 years, but I don't know if we can do it for this 13th time. But during those times, we, we raised the deductible several times to keep the cost where we could afford What, what do we say the five the $5? What is the difference between, can we, is that $25,000 savings a year is kind of what we're? Well, are you just looking at just the employee basic mm -hmm. and not, and leaving the rest of them the same? No, I thought maybe we meant the five for everybody. Yeah. But they were saying, I don't, are you asking if we just, that one and then everybody else, everybody else's would go up or? I mean, that, that seems like what makes the most sense to me is if you're covering the employee, then the rest of it's on them. And then that'll, that'll cover everything else, I believe. Now, are you saying that the same for the enhanced plan? Because the employees do pay something on the enhanced okay. plan now. They already plan. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And I would think probably. Well, that would just be the difference on that one. Just. The enhanced plan, I don't, because they're, they're choosing to pick that anyway. So you go ahead and do that. And then it's zero at the, the regular plan. So how much difference are we talking about probably then? Well, if you only did, and this is ballparking. Yeah. If you only did the, if you left it at zero on the basic plan on just the employee, you know, that's about $6,000. That's not that big of a deal. I make a motion we try it one more year. 
Are you saying with just the, the one county employee and then maybe the other ones have the the, the other plans that they choose, they have that increase? Well, they have the option to take it or not, don't they? Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. And they are paying for it already. Yeah. Yeah, Let make sure I understand. Like the enhanced plan, do you want to leave it at 10 or you want to put it at the 15? No, what he's or saying is not change any of them. Huh? No, what he's no. saying is not changing at all. Like you're right for one more year. Not changing any of it? I think Larry's saying don't change We got two different people. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, y'all. Larry doesn't want to change anything. And Bo was saying don't change, leave the employee, the one at zero for the free plan, and then. At 15 on the enhanced. Yeah. The enhanced plans, if they want it, they can pick that in. It goes up a little bit. Okay. Right. Is that okay with you, Larry? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So read the motion for Miranda and write her down. Uh, I guess I'll make a motion to leave the employee on the basic plan the same and then increase everything else by the way Ann has it figured. As presented. As presented. Well you second that okay, Larry? Now you, let me make sure the enhanced plan, do you want to leave it at 15? No, no. The, just the basic, just the basic. single employee. Just the basic. Yeah. Everything else okay. goes up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And who do we make the motion? Uh, I'll make the motion. Both make the motion and Larry second. Okay. Any more discussion before we vote? If I could just say, Judge, I'm, I meant to say this. Um, I think you all should be very proud of yourselves for offering what you do because we've attracted several, at least 12 that I can count, employees that have come here specifically because they can add their children or family at an affordable price. And in today's time, that's saying a lot because health insurance is very important. And we're one of the few, few counties, cities, whatever, that even offers a free plan still. So we've been doing that for a long time. Yeah. Long time. Long time. Since before I came. So, I guess roll call, Miranda. Pollock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Callaway? Yes. Markew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. So the health insurance plan is adopted. Uh, the next one is here where Bess has to go out and collect Adam's taxes for it. Not seriously, not really. I just have to throw that at you. This is what it's written here. It says it's the clerk's receipt of the sheriff's 2023 delinquent property taxes. We have that, we need to approve that. Make a motion. Motion by Kenneth Calloway. I'll second. Second by Bo Bennett. Any discussion or questions for the, anyone, for the sheriff or anybody? Being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion passed. Adam, come here and tell us what you're doing at Forestville. Yeah. Excuse me, Mayor. <laughs> yeah, the mayor and city councilman from Forestville is here. Yes, yeah, so basically what we've decided to do is, as I came in the sheriff's office, uh, I've noticed for the last couple of years, Elvis Doolin, when he was sheriff, he always had a deputy up in the Forgeville area. And during the nighttime hours, it ranged anywhere between four or four midnight. So as I come in, I noticed it takes us a long time to get to Forgeville area, which you represent and the mayor and the commissioner back there can agree that when they called the sheriff's office, it would take anywhere between 23 minutes or less to get there. And when somebody calls 911 or they need a deputy, you know, minutes seem like forever. So what we've decided to do was when I came in is I put a deputy back up in Fordsville uh, during the nighttime hours. And during the day, I've got two deputies that rotate that take turns going up there. So now what I'm doing is I've got with the Ohio County EMS who pays rent in the side of the fire department where the ambulance used to, what used to be at. What I realized is they don't utilize that bay or that office as much as they used to. So I went to the Ohio County EMS and said, if we, the Sheriff's Department, the county agree to pick up half that bill, 
to continue the rest of this year, can we use that? And he's like, you guys can have every bit of it. He said more likely the only time they would probably come up there and utilize that is during the bad weather or the snow to park ambulance up there to knock down their response time. So dramatically, they pay $250 a month, but since we're coming into it this late in the year, it's only gonna cost us $1,000. To rent that area from the fire department it benefits them and gives them the extra money to do something with the fire department uh, and later on if things continue to go well we can possibly start collecting taxes up there we're going to start doing vehicle inspections up there to help the people from Hemel drive all the way down from Forestville to get to hartford you know because okay. and that thousands for the whole rest of this year yes sir it is mm -hmm. yeah so, thank you. It's a good idea. He need motion, motion for the money. It's in his budget and everything. It's time to use his uh, capital outline. Okay. Out of the sheriff's capital outline. Yeah. That's great. So, go ahead and motion. Make a motion. Motion by Kenneth Callaway. Second. Second by uh, Michael McKinney. Any more discussion? Being none. I'm fair to say aye. Aye. Cause like I think that's a great idea to do that. It's, uh, we met with the mayor and city council up there a few weeks ago, and the people in Fordsville really trying to uh, move forward and do a lot of things there. So just one more thing to, to help. Uh, next in front of you have ordinance 2023-7. That's the budget for the second reading, which you've already passed the first reading of. I need a motion for the second reading. So move. Motion by Larry Morphew. Second. Second by Jason Bullock. Is there any discussion? You know, it's a roll call since it's a uh, ordinance. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yep. Johnson? Yes. Callaway? Yes. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. I do believe this is the earliest we've ever had the second reading of the budget passed, don't you think? I believe it's, first, it's the earliest we've ever done. So I really want to thank you, gentlemen, for that. I'd like to thank Ann for laying it out side by side on the initial presentation. Good deal. Um, of course, every year to get through the end of the year, you got to move your money around between the accounts to make them all work out. So you have a budget amendment ordinance. That's for the budget time we're in now. Uh, and it's 2023-10. Uh, uh, this is the first read, so you'll see this one again. Any motion there? Now, is this the, is this the one I'm looking at, the revenue and the moving around the LGAA? We, we needed some for the end of the year some in our reserves for the general fund, so uh, two of those will go into the reserves, general fund reserves. And you got to come on, you have to toward the end of the I'll make a motion year year you I'll, ask have the, for, I'll make a motion to accept the uh, budget amendment one. Motion with Jason Bullock. Second by Kenneth Callaway. Any further discussion? <coughs> Being that since it's an ordinance also, we need a, a roll call. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Callaway? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Um, so that uh, we have some guests, and so they don't have to wait past our uh, closed session. I'll ask the Barnes to come up and talk to us a minute. So most of y'all know me, I'm Joe Barnes, and uh, I was coming today to actually talk to you about the water line to Chiggerville, that uh, grant money that... Uh, we'll and introduce the other people with you. This is my dad, Sam, or Malcolm Barnes, and my mom, Shirley. Yeah. And we represent the two households right now that's down in the Chiggerville area. Um, so, you know, I served on the court for eight years, and uh, one of the big pushes on the court was to get everybody water. And uh, I never said much about our area because I didn't want to see the money come from the county or, or anything. But now uh, Larry and David both pushed that dramatically. And 
actually David told me he thought he would, you know, was going to come up with some money, and I, I really didn't think that, you know, he would get the money from the state, but uh, he came up with the money to uh, about 800, uh, was that 840,000? To put the line down to the Chiggerville area. And uh, we're, we're ecstatic about, you know, what the court did to try to get the, the water down there. Uh, the problem is, from what I understand, you know, the flushing and the stuff that the water district puts it in, it's going to cost them a good bit. And uh, never got a, an actual number. We was kind of on the high end when I was on the court on what it could be. But, uh, you know, what I talked to David uh, when I was going out of uh, my term is, you know, there's more to it than just us getting water. I mean, we, we don't get me wrong, we really want the water. Uh, but there's a chance that the county could use this as a building block for just more than just our area. Uh, if you could loop, the water's gonna come in from Rochester Road. It's five miles is what it is. I've talked to some of the uh, contractors on what it would cost, and they said that the money that we had would be enough to get to Chiggerville and maybe a little extra. And that was when the prices had kind of skyrocketed. Now, I don't know how much it's gone down. I know a lot of the other prices have kind of rescinded, you know, on what wood and everything was, so I don't know how the pipe uh, industry has done. But the, uh, what I was talking to David about, you know, there's a lot of money out there that I'm hearing for water, and there's, there's a chance to get more grants. Uh, and what I said is if there was any way we could loop the line, and take it back towards Eccles and hit, come from a six inch line and go to a six inch line, it would do more than just to provide us water. For the, it would make the loop where you don't have to flush it so you wouldn't be out the cost and the maintenance of, of keeping the water from going stagnant or however you want it. It would keep the circulation up. But second of all, uh, what I'd always heard uh, when I was sitting on the court, there was a lot of complaints about the pressure in the Eccles and Rockport area. And when they did fire hydrant checks and the ISO ratings uh, for those areas, there were some uh, significant problems. And I think Charlie could explain a little better than, I mean, because he's the one who explained it to me when, when I was on the court. But it, there was some issues there. There was. If we done tests, if we opened a hydrant in Rockport, and there was one up 62 towards Mike Henry or even up towards Beaver Dam, it would kill the pressure to the hydrant down there, and you wouldn't able to get it. Cause they have a tank down there, but the way I understand, they don't keep water in their tank. So all the water comes into Rockport's down 62. So if there's a fire in Rockport and there's a fire in Mike Henry, Rockport ain't gonna have water. That's why, even when we done the ISO testing down there, that's what happened to us on that time. Mm -hmm. So in my theory, you know, the only way that you're ever gonna fix that is you're either gonna have to find another way to bring the water in, or you're gonna have to make the line bigger coming from 62 which, you know, you know all the utilities and, 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 you know, problems you would have about fixing a line coming down a major highway like that with all the residents and, and other utilities that you would be crossing. And if you come in kind of the back door, come off Rochester, loop it through our area, and then go back up, there's nothing down there to worry about. I mean, there's... There's a landline, but we don't even use it anymore because it got in such bad shape. Uh, you know, we just use cell phones. But the other biggest thing that we had is uh, fire protection down there. Uh, for as long as I've lived down there, and as long as my parents said, you know, you'll have forest fires, and all that state fish and wildlife ground, some of it's, you know, where people's camping and everything. And there's been times where the fires have cut us off either direction. And the only way you can fight the fire is go to the closest fire hydrant, which is from from our house. It's five miles either way. And I've got it on this map here that Charlie Charlie provided. There's one at Fulkerson Road and 1245 intersection, just about. And then there's another one at uh, 19 School Road and uh, Rochester that we put in when I was on the court. Uh, so uh, if y'all like, take a look. Nineteen school, and we got Rochester here, and uh, this is uh, 
pond run. And we're located right here. Y'all can keep that. I mean, Charlie will get you another one. I understand exactly Those what you're saying. <coughs> uh, it's always been my opinion that you've got the money, you do what you've got. And if they can loop it in to solve all these other problems, this much of it's done. You know, well, I, I, I like to get it done. How much it's done? My what biggest thing is, is uh, and don't get me wrong, I understand there could be some costs. I'm flushing until you get more money, but the money's out there from what I'm hearing from several different entities to get more money for water. You can, and this actually gives you two other ways to get the money. Fire protection for state fish and wildlife ground and residents. So you, you know, if there's money out there, you think the state would want to protect their ground just as much as they want to protect uh, the residents that live down there. Okay. And then the other one is the pressure. It's going to help fix the pressure at Eccles and Rockport. You can circulate that water through those two roads, Y Sox and Pond Run. You can dial back 62s and bring more into the back door and keep that line you know circulating enough that you wouldn't have to flush it it's just the biggest thing that i see and i hate to you know, i wasn't very uh vocal on this uh before we got the money because I, I really didn't think that we'd ever see the money but now that we've got the money i hate to see the core not not utilize it and it goes back to the state there's two reasons you know i've always been told and uh, on these grants if you let the money go back, it's a lot harder to get the money the next time for, for an issue. And, you know, it's going to be a lot harder if you had a water issue and you went after it and they give you $800,000 and you turned it back into state and said, we decided not to do that. The next time it, it comes around, they're probably not going to be as re reluctant to go fight for you and get it and give it to you, is what I have there, seen. There have been other people called today <clears throat> saying that the water line would be a big consideration they own property there and plan to build a house back. And this would be a, a I, big, I they did. would push them into making that decision for sure. Yeah, I did talk to some of the neighbors. So what we have right now, some of that ground, the surface ground was bought by the mines for possibility of, of stripping surface in the future. That was when Armstrong was there and, and uh, they, uh, the surface stripping doesn't look like it's as plausible, but they also had a possibility of underground mining and putting a bathhouse in where they would have to have the water. Uh, I've talked to them about that. It's still a possibility that that could happen because there is a, a, a large coal reserve down in that area. It all depends on the market. You know how the coal industry is. It's up and down. But, um, you know, there's, there's like five, at one point in time, there's five other dwellings down there that people lived in other than just my my house and my dad's house and um, those people will get their ground back and from what i've talked to kenny brown yeah. uh, he's what called today they're all interested when they get their ground back you know about at or utilizing it one way or another family members moving to it maybe even building houses several people's made comments about it of course they don't have water but they didn't have water once before, they had wells. But if they could get water, they would love to have it. So, I mean, it's not just the two houses that's down there right now. When their time runs out with the mines, their ground will go back to them. And they will, you know, them or their family members will be moving back down there from what has been indicated to me. So, plus, you know, you, you do have the possibility of an industry that could move down there and, and put in the underground. But, the other biggest thing that I see that's just you right in your face looking at you right now is increasing the pressure to Rockport and Eccles and the fire protection. And it's like when I was talking to Kenny, he had a good point. He said, you know, if you got water line down through there on those two roads, he said, what's to say that the state wouldn't lease out a track of ground for a, for a uh, outfitter or whatever to have a small campground. People come down there and camp all the time, but there's no water. They just have to bring in with their RVs or their uh, their travel trailers. And surprising enough, in, you know, in hunt season, there's a lot of people set up down there. And they they station from several of the different campsites that, you know, doesn't have water. So, I mean, there could be, a, a, you know, it, it, it could be a really good thing for Ohio County on the infrastructure if we could get the money for free. But I think you're going to have to start with this first step and use $800,000 
and then you could you could go after more but i i think you're gonna have to commit and start right. using it because there is some timelines we don't need to hold up on the construction of this was the eight hundred thousand? was that a four or six inch line it, it wasn't it was uh they had priced it but uh, i had called some people and, and got bids too yeah the difference in the four inch line and the six inch line was seventy five thousand okay. dollars so it's not so much the materials it's it's more the labor and then you know of course with grants you've got to go through you know the engineering cost and i spoke to mr hickman in regards to this i think and actually i called you afterwards and uh, I spoke to him in regards to entertaining the loop yeah. because it's something that, that I was aware of as well you know, previously and before you came back and were on the court. And uh, he said that he was going to speak to the engineers. It would be more cost to incur to us with the engineers to, to revisit it. But I definitely thought the project should be held up uh, if we're looking at a four-inch line because it wouldn't make that loop and wouldn't, wouldn't serve those people in, right. the, in the other area if we did so so i was under the impression that he may be here tonight to address this but he's not but we've uh i have spoken to him like i said uh last month in regards to getting with the engineers and trying to get us a, a cost difference between those two yeah and well know, and know exactly if, if our eight hundred thousand rent is going to cover it yeah. at least get you guys serviceable at this point and then to, to plan to make the, the rest yeah. of that and work. while there money's out there as far as federal and state aid to get water and to go in the direction you know I, it, now would be the time to try to go after but we, i'd say that, that we don't want to see some positive being moved on this eight hundred thousand. plus i believe there were some deadlines on uh maybe the 24 2024 year what did you say deadlines i believe there were some deadlines on like in 2024 that you know certain things had to be done I don't know if there was any deadlines in 23 as far as like actually starting a project or whatever. Um, but, um, you know, everybody would love to have it. But I just hate to see, you know, if, if you didn't utilize the money and, and take advantage of that money that would help build the infrastructure and, and provide all that pressure to Rockport and Eccles. Yeah, and that's why I talk, I spoke with Eric as well. Uh, I just, well, I think what we're trying to do mostly is just try to see it done right the first time where we'll have that ability to look back, like me and you spoke about that night. Uh, so I haven't heard back from Eric, but I know he's supposed to be getting a new plan with the engineer and um, judge, isn't that correct? that Eric is yeah. speaking with them. Yeah. So, and like I said, I, I just called the contractors to put in the line and, and I told them, you know, what we had. They looked at a few things that was uh, some uh, overall plans that was submitted to us, you know, when we were on the court last year and uh, the footage and everything. And right off the bat, they said, well, going from four inch to six inch would be $75,000 more. But based on the amount of money you have and the mileage you're going and this was at that time middle of last year uh, it looks like you've got the money to to at least accomplish getting to chigger yeah, yeah but you know i was talking to them about even you know what would it do to, to loop it because you know you always got to be looking at on down the road yeah. and building yeah. so yeah, i appreciate it and I, I think we're all going to do everything we can to make it happen here i think if we do we, we need to make it what we can loop it. I mean, that's what it's saying. You can yeah. fix it where you can, but not wait. Fix it where you can, and if you're going to do it, loop it. But well, and the biggest thing is, is you 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 got to put a six-inch line in if you want to be able to put fire hydrants in. That's right. Yeah. So if you're gonna if you're gonna build on that, and maybe even go after fire protection for the state fish and wildlife ground, and you know any grants that's out there to help help build or this puzzle and put it all together. You're going to have to have six inch line. That's just providing you water. And right. You and there is six inch line. There's a six inch line on Rochester and a six inch line on Pond Run. So then you would be able to back feed pressure into Rapids and Rockport. So you want this fast? Yeah. I'll I admit it's kind of a, it's a huge project and the money, but I was shocked that we got. Right. This, right. What the, yeah. the state gave us the money. And, and that's the biggest thing is, you yeah. know, 
I would have never dreamed that we would get it, but if you could get the money, yeah. you yeah. know, why not take advantage of it? Gentlemen, we need a small, a short, and we are going to make a short. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Mr. Barnes, thank you. Barnes. Thank you. Barnes. Uh, can I have a motion going to short? So second. Motion second. Larry, second. Motion second. You got it? Yeah. All, all yeah. in favor, join yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. What we're doing, we're going into closed session under KRS 61-110, Chapter 1, Section C and F. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you. Motion to go back into the session. Yeah. I will get you. I guess y'all want to go back in the session. I'll make a motion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We're back. Uh, Thank you for your patience. I will uh, tell you that there was no uh, business uh, transacted, there were no motions made. And there was no, uh, and so that I want y'all to know that. That's we, the motion to go back into close open session and unanimous session. It was. Okay. That nobody left, so I guess it's back to me. All right. Uh, anyway, that's where we are. Uh, I have a uh, personnel issue if you'll give it to me here. Could I say something first, Judge? Okay. The issue that was brought up before we went into closed session on the water line, mm -hmm. I'd like to entertain a motion that we started, put out for bids, and start and use what, 800000 and go from there. Okay, I will say uh, that's good. Uh, it would have to be, still it's a water board problem for this, but I, I would second your motion. But, I mean, it's still, understand it is a water board issue. But we can push it, correct? That's, I mean, I think the motion may be better worded if you said that that's what we wanted to do. Right. We so strongly encourage the water board to take bids and proceed with it. And proceed with it? Yes. That's his motion then. Did you get it? Yes. You changed it. Because we're recognizing, by, by the way, at that time that we're urging the water board to. And I second it. So there's any further discussion? Is the motion to advertise for bids but to have them to yes to, to advertise for bids it exists right. for them to okay. yep. proceed um, that part of it um, which is that so right now it's for proceeding to advertise for a bid to see what the cost would be yeah. well that's part of the process yeah. I'm confused. so is it to encourage the water board to that's move a, with at it? this Look, point hold on, it hold is on. is it to encourage the water board to move with it or to actually seek a bid no we couldn't seek the bid they have to right Okay, so to encourage the water board is what the motion is. Okay, to, to seek to, to proceed the way he said it. And, okay, and take a bid is the first If I got tarnishing the money, Judge, why couldn't we uh, advertise for bids? Uh, I've been told we couldn't. I can research it further. It's been going on a pretty good while, mm -hmm. and it needs to be addressed. Problem some solve herself. Mm -hmm. So we do have a motion second. Is there any further discussion? At this point, it's just telling the water board we want them to go with it. It's not us doing action ourselves. Any further discussion? I'll vote on it if it's to advertise the, for them to advertise for the bid to come back with a, with a, a price with us. Okay. So we'll know, and then we'll vote to proceed at that point. Is that right? Actually, we don't. The water board does. But I mean, Though we might get the urgent even stronger if we get the bid. Yeah, I, 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 I'll you, agree with it. Uh, not to keep adding more to the motion, but I'd like to advertise for the loop. And you could advertise to urge, to the, to urge them to urge them. We to could. Well, yeah, I mean, you could advertise. It's not to say you're going to uh, take that action, but if you just wanted to know the cost itself for the county to advertise for that type of work, that's kind of what I'd like you to know. Do that. That's what I'd like to. Yes. Let, let's do it that way then. If you want to, uh, I'll take my second back. You take your motion back and restate. Read it again. We advertise for bids for uh, the blue, the project. The, the, the line is we 
had it for the grant floor and the loop belt to do the whole So probably accepted it. And I also want to put in there when they get, if we get to start on it, would we'll use the 800000 and look for the rest of the money somewhere else. Yeah, but go ahead and use it to do what we got going now. Right. All right. I, I, I'm sorry, I just don't know what the motion is. Uh, I sorry. mean, so is I would, it okay I, if I read it? Yes, I mean, I'm just a little confused on what the. Is what it okay with you, Larry? Is. Sure. Read it. Larry moves that we advertise for bids for the water line to Chiggerville. Uh, uh, considering the amount of grant money that we have and to also as a separate bid advertise for the bid to loop it in with the uh, uh, what's the name of the other road? No? Uh, uh, Rochester, well, Rochester with Rochester Road. Okay. So and that's a six inch. Yes, yeah, six, six inch, inch line. Okay, one more question, then I'll be done. What is the difference of this and the bid we already have from the engineer? Didn't we pay the engineer to get us the bid or something? No, we did, the Lord board did. We're right. actually going out on our own to figure out some prices. Is there any more with, with this being the same project, I was under the impression that the engineer that they'd already had to do that would give us a price on the loop. That would be a takeoff. You still don't know if that's bid. Do you want me to bid out for this, uh, for the next fiscal court meeting? Do you, you want a 4 o'clock meeting beforehand, too? I don't think it'd be necessary. I don't think you'd get them that quick. I or think it's going to take longer than that to get them. For the first meeting next month? People have to go up there and measure and check all that. Read the motion back to his anti Miranda. Approved to advertise for the Chicago Waterline project in the amount of $850,000. Also for the loop around on the Rochester Road six inch line. That's it. I mean, uh, I'll put the I, I specs available. You no, know, the 850 won't office. be in there when you get bids because then that's telling anybody what yeah, we got. Yeah. Well, referring to the project, sorry. I Re won't put the 850 in. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? Did you get the motion that time, uh, Justin? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So, no more discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So this is going to get us a motion. definite price from our bid person. So we'll, we'll kind of have a, a concrete bid okay. for ourselves. That's good. I'll advertise for two weeks. Okay. We'll have to give you a little more information to put I'll get it. We'll work on getting that. All right, let's move on down the road here. I got a personnel issue, and I turned my face back around. Here it is. Uh, courthouse maintenance. Uh, that's the courthouse over there. We want to hire Rihanna Jones as a custodian part-time at 1271 per hour. That's a level one, and that is beginning. I don't see the beginning day. Sunday. Okay. 4.30, 30, 23. Uh, you've real that. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Callaway? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Ian Kenny? Yes. How many hours a week is that, Judge? Uh, 22. Up to that. Up to 22. Sometimes it's less. Okay. Thank you. What was the guy's name again one more time? The, the last full name? Oh, okay. Uh, Rihanna Jones. Rihanna, it's a lady. Rihanna. Lady, Rihanna Jones. Okay, I was thinking of the, the song about Rihanna. Rihanna Jones. Okay. Uh, and we went through a bunch already recently there, so it's uh, hard to find anybody to do that job. Okay. Back to my Committee reports. Uh, I'll tell you what, let me uh, appoint a new committee before we start on the reports. We're going to be having a, a contract come up pretty soon uh, with the landfill. 
uh, in the next few years. And we want, I mean, start thinking about what we can do. One of the big issues is the gas, ownership of the gas in the landfill uh, for the next uh, contract. So I'm pointing Michael McKinney, uh, Larry Morphew, and Charlie Shields to do the mapping for it. As time goes on, we'll get some others that know more about that. When's that contract up for under now? 2027. 20 percent. Yeah, but we'll start the negotiations before then. What's the, what they come up with on the gas? That's sort of what we got to work out the next contract. Well, it, there's certainly some question as to uh, the contract. You, you've seen the language. So the contract, what it's supposed to be. Yeah. So, so the distribution of the proceeds, if it's harvested, the methane was, I think, 50-50. If, if, because I know you've seen that link here recently. Uh, the biggest issue has been whatever company that uh, we have um, worked with in attempting to harvest that gas. Uh, the last company we found was not even, there was some, some uh, question as to who was dealing with it and we found they weren't even a legitimate uh, uh, company to deal with. So we've had the proposals and from my understanding the uh, landfill has been working with that. They're under an obligation to continue to seek possible third party Harvesters. Now, so they're they're supposed, supposed to pay for it, correct? Yeah, they're supposed to pay for those costs. And I think, I, I'm not aware of any costs that we've incurred yet. I, I may be wrong on that, but uh, I'm not aware of any. But they are supposed to be under the obligation. I think we are certainly, and we spoke to the Republic about this um, or any other party that we intend to contract with, that there has to be some expectations that the general um, requirements is in the last contract just saying that they needed to take efforts. There needs to be some more teeth with respect to that. Um, that's not to say that there could have been a third party that could have uh, been harvesting this methane to make any um, any type of revenue or anything of that nature. I, I just think uh, uh, the county should retain a little bit more with respect to that. But when we seek a uh, contract, we it's. Um, um, we're going to need to dive into that. And so whenever you have your committee meeting, just let me know. I'll be there. Good deal. Well, really, we're losing, us and them both, we're losing money by not harvesting, aren't we? Yes. But, ain't they burning so far out there? So they have to burn, yes. So they have to burn if it's not harvested. But uh, the biggest issue is, I can't remember the number or, or, or what the acronym is that they use, but it was under a thousand, whatever that acronym is, it was under a thousand. And when it's under a thousand, there is some difficulty in whether that can be profitable considering the cost of harvesting that methane. Uh, it, it, it causes additional costs on the landfill in uh, meeting federal and state guidelines because that uh, there are some pretty stringent uh, guidelines with respect to that. And then whether a third party could put that much money into it uh, and uh, recovering. I think the fact that we could uh, possibly enter into another 20-year franchise agreement might entice some to possibly um, <clears throat> look more to harvesting that methane because right now with the contract coming up in four years they're not going to spend millions upon millions of dollars for well, something like that. Is leverage? I think the intention is, is that we, we expect hopefully something with that methane. And they're wanting to extend that they would love to renew the contract now and just extend it theirs actually which i don't we don't have that option no we have to be but that's what they asked for in a recent meeting wasn't well, that what you understood justin that they asked us for? Uh, yeah <clears throat> i think they're, they're certainly hopeful to continue with the relationship with the county but we're under an obligation to bid that uh, can we contract. get it early then i would say you're i mean well and when i talked to the left. judge uh, Republic asked to recently meet with us uh, with respect to, uh, I think they, they're aware it's coming up too. Um, so I think the hope is, is that we look at the contract that was done around 2007, we update it, we, get, we, we figure out some things that we may want to see different, 
and then we seek bids, um, and uh, but that's what we're required to do, and then and we can enter into a similar 20-year franchise if we wish. And, and they will, as long as they allow us to accept bids and they're okay with it, then we can go ahead and accept bids early? I think, it's you know, I mean, we, I don't think they are going to release their contract early before, before 2027. And so, so I think when this committee uh, uh, meets, I think we probably want to get a timeline as to when a bid would still be uh, a bid um, that could be met in 2027. You know, I don't know if the the fluctuation in cost or whatever, whether it needs to be bid in 25, 26, or close to the time of 27. That's some of the things that probably Michael and Larry want to figure out and then look at the language of the contract and make amendments and those things that they, they feel is necessary. Not just for Republic or any other bidders. Uh, is there any other committee reports? Uh, that we we know the side by side. We met this there. afternoon. I don't know exactly yet if we're going to meet next in two weeks. Do we decide whether we're going to meet in two weeks or do we still want to wait and see? So, uh, you know, I'm going to be here at four o'clock. I don't know. We're, I think she's going to try to Miss Coots that's on the uh, uh, committee. She's going to try to get some information together and talk with Justin and then whether or not we meet. Next. It might be the meeting after next. But uh, I do have one question for the mental health committee meeting. Um, we have, we're doing a scholarship for our <coughs> student. I don't have the name of the student yet. Can, can, I, can I request a check, I guess? Do we have that, does that do we vote on? <coughs> if I, well, I mean, you can make a motion now. I don't know the student's name. Well, to you can, I, th I think you could just say to the recipient. Yeah, whatever the recipient that qualifies okay. based on your All requirements. Because we'd probably rather not have a juvenile's name in the. Yeah, I don't, and I don't want to release the name anyway, but I want the check to be able, because I think May 12th, I don't know when the next court meeting is, do you? But May 12th is the award ceremony. We want to make sure that we had the. Do we have another meeting for them or not? No, that's 9th. 9th at 5 o'clock. The nine. Mm -hmm. But can I go ahead and just say I'd like to make a motion to release, I think it's a thousand dollar scholarship for the recipient. the recipient of the mental health committee meeting scholarship, annual scholarship. Now the, the recipient would have to be disclosed at some point because they received it. will the after, is that, yeah, I don't care to, but I don't want to say it now because <laughs> they, they don't know. Sure. Okay. Where's the money coming from? It's money we have. We, we do fundraisers to the committee. It, it oh. runs through the, we're just a pass through here. So. Mm -hmm. so I was second that somebody else. Okay. Any more discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like so. Motion carried. Any other committee reports? Uh, 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 Landon, I think you wanted to tell us something, give us a briefing on your remodel job. Uh, <clears throat> I believe I'll, I'll be ready for that. Uh, I think it's next, next time. Next okay, time. okay. you're right. Yes, you're right. I'm the one that said that. Now I forgot it. Uh, you're in a dangerous spot separating them rights, sir. I, I know. I thought I'd move it a minute, but yeah. I got them blocked in. Yeah. That way. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy. Prior to the meeting, I passed out contract. What it is, the ARCH program runs the GPS of alcohol monitoring systems for the county and for the courts in Ohio County. Uh, right now, um, with the contract that was the week previously had in place, uh, it wasn't a bad contract, but I was able to nego renegotiate it in the last few weeks and it significantly lowered the cost. Uh, so this is a cost lowering contract. Uh, the contract is not binding as far as a term or we're bound by year to year. It's actually day by day. The contract is more for payment purposes. As long as we have the equipment and have it in use, then we will pay for the usage of that. We was able to significantly drop those uh, costs. Uh, it may not seem like a significant amount, but for those that uh, have to pay it for as many monitors we have running it, it turns into quite a bit. 
for instance, the SL3s, which is the alcohol monitoring device, they were costing us $5.50 a day. Now that's been lowered down to $4.10 a day. Um, over a month's time for people that can't hardly afford that that's being released from jail is significant. And then the GPS monitoring, the ankle monitors, which was $4.30 a day uh, that we was needing to pay for that. It has now been lowered to $2.95 a day. And there's several reasons that we want that lowered. Uh, we have now, mo the majority of the people pay for their ankle monitors uh, whenever they get out, but there's some that still can't. By lowering that cost, especially for like an ankle monitor, $2.95 a day, it can self-pay through that because most people can come up with $2.95 a day or the families can. Also, as they would negotiate into that contract, a 10% loss clause. Uh, right now, if we lose on the previous contract, an ankle monitor is $2,250 to replace that. Uh, if somebody cuts it off and disposes of it or destroys it in some way, and if we can't get the restitution back, that's what it would be. So I was able to get a 10% loss clause put in our contract where we'd lose up to 10% of them and not have to pay anything at all. And we've only lost one. <clears throat> I was going to run out of curiosity. How many have we lost? Here? We've only lost one Just in the last year and a half. And that one, I was told that the person shot with a shotgun and threw it into the river. And there was $2,250 that had to be used to recoup um, that. So right now, with the average that we're running, we lose up to three a year and not have to pay anything. Because we usually have uh, in inventory around 30 of those. We right now have 23 in operation. Uh, we do not pay for the monitors unless they're actually in use. So whenever we receive these monitors, there's nothing paid for them for us to have them in storage, unless we go over 30% of our inventory. Then we'll pay a small amount per day for those over 30%. But right now, uh, we're not paying anything for the extras, and they're only, used, they're only paid for when in use. And that is the main purpose of getting these even lowered more is because of self-payment. And that's pretty much the gist of the contract. And like I said, it's a day-by-day -day contract. If we decide tomorrow that we don't want these anymore, we just call them up and say, come back and get them. Uh, we're not bound by any time limit. The contract's more just for payment. And uh, we just need a motion to approve this contract. And you've seen the contract. I've looked at it with Jimmy, and Jimmy's been pretty thorough with it, too. And so I'll make a motion to accept it. I second it. Motion by Jason, second by Larry. Any discussion? Any discussion or further questions? Big none, all folks say aye. Aye. Opposed, like some. Motion carried. It's nice that somebody goes back a little bit lower. It seems like it's always a little bit higher. Yeah, okay. and, uh, I'd like to thank you for, for going back for us and, yeah. and watching after. And you already mentioned to each of the guys about they need to find one person. I'm getting for ready to. Go I'm ahead. getting ready to cover that here in just a moment. Ahead. But a little backstory to the ankle monitors, I was approached by another company that wanted to underbid this company, so we was able to work back and forth to see who would go the lowest. And then whenever I threw in the 10% loss, the one company that we already had said, we'll add that 10% loss for this another company. Would. So that's how we negotiated through that. Um, but uh, I'm always willing to negotiate for lower prices. Uh, another thing before I go into what the judge just mentioned, a few weeks ago uh, I was appointed by the governor to the uh, Kentucky Land Heritage Conservation Board and uh, we met for the first time that I've been on the board last week in Frankfurt. Um, there was a lot of opportunities available and I'd like to encourage the county to um, look at those opportunities and see what we can do. There's land that can be purchased with, with funding from that board. Uh, there is land preservation, conservation preservation, and also money for recreation, recreational usages. So I've turned into the judge's office the dates and deadlines for each quarterly application for funding for grants, and also our month, our quarterly meetings. Uh, about two months before the quarterly meetings is the grant deadline, so we have time to look at the grants to approve them. And I think it's a plus for this county to be able to sit on that board and possibly bring some of that money here. It has been used in the past here in the county to purchase property. I think the judge had told me out around the golf course. The first one ever, first grant ever from that fund was Ohio County, first phase of Highview Park. 
and then in, after that we got two more phases of Highview Park, total of about 300 acres down there we purchased that money, and then we got 115 acres at the back of the park, the Eli Kane Park. Uh, that this is for nature. At that time, that's all you could use it for. And I'm sorry, Miranda, you got here one more. This will be the last time today. Yeah, like um, the first ever one of those grants that was awarded to Ohio County, and the first management plan that the state ever used for the management plan of the property was ours, which your park director at that time wrote. And, uh, it was also used as a model for the next five years from riding by. I was always took a lot of pride in that. I wrote the very first one and got the very first grant for it. I've been offered a few different appointments to boards, and I didn't see how those appointments would benefit the county, but with this one, I seen that it would. So that's why I accepted yeah, this one. Well, this Kentucky Heritage is it different than what we were talking about? You know, we talked about the one time at the Jerusalem Bridge. And that's a different. That's, yeah. a, that's a little different, but if you're looking at turning that into a heritage area, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're talking about the land heritage uh, uh, fund that is national. Uh, it's a little different, but if you want to declare that the out there, board, way, we talked about yeah. this, this is more state level. We were, we were talking about the federal level, which I'd still like to see happen. I have it too. Um, yeah. But at, at the state level, you can purchase property and turn it into recreational property. Um, one of the examples that I've been given is like um, the old house out the um, out out the ridge. Um, the, 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 or the Charlie Monroe. Charlie Monroe. Yeah, that something like that could be purchased and it, it could actually uh, be turned into a so-called recreational area because it would be a tourism recreational type place and it could be an extension and maybe even some additional parking or something like that. So that's just something to keep in mind that I don't, I don't mind a bit to step up for the county and speak on behalf of the county since I'm on that board. Well, we really appreciate you doing that, Jimmy. Really do. And we are going to be coming up with some projects. Okay. And then the other thing is shortly after the tornado hit Ohio County, we discussed the fact that there was not a 501c3 nonprofit here where we could funnel some of the money through the county and so forth. Uh, so I started to work on that. With the help of some others and i wrote the article articles of incorporation for this uh nonprofit, ohio county resources is the name of it and i also wrote the 501c3 and got it approved through the irs got all that submitted got a bank account open there's a board in place we had to have a board in place to get started we had to start somewhere and we went through the process of writing the bylaws and so forth and so on it has to operate somewhat independently, as most people know how 501c3s work. It has to operate some, somewhat independent from, from county government. We also want to be partners with Ohio, Ohio County government because that's the purpose, is to provide those resources. So working jointly and still staying within the, the codes of the IRS for a 501c3, we was able to put that together. Uh, today, we uh, finalized the bylaws and we went through several versions. Uh, this version here is, I think, one of the most acceptable because it involves the, uh, the fiscal court. And it gives some uh, authority to the fiscal court as well in this partnership that doesn't violate the 501c3. And what it is is to provide resources if there's another natural disaster, if there is uh, a house fire or any kind of resources that is needed to be provided to our citizens in Ohio County, that we can use that as a way to receive donations and filter that money back out to the people in need. And in doing so, we set up uh, a board of directors that will have seven board members. You generally want an odd amount on the board. Uh, five of those board members will be uh, selected by each of the five uh, districts to represent each of the five districts that you represent. And starting off with this, we, like I said, we had to put a board in place. One of the things that uh, was decided in this is to rotate the board so that everyone isn't leaving at the same time. So you still have every other year, it's three year terms with someone leaving uh, each of those uh, three years. 
and some of those years we'll have two people leaving the, the board. Can they, can they start consecutive terms? Like yes, there, there is no term limits. And uh, so the way that it's set up is those terms will end staggered in June of each year. The newest terms with the people that's already been on the board to get this organized, we wanted to leave them in place and not just kick them to the side of, per se, I, I hate using that term, but uh, since they help get this organized. So we voted today that each person will serve at least a full three-year term. So those that's coming up this June won't just be reappointed. So, so they will be there. And, and that was a choice. And we've got applications that we will pass out to the uh, uh, physical court, each of you magistrates. And the way that it will work is that you can submit up to three names in your district that you'd like to see seated on the board. And the board will select one of those three to sit on the board from your selection. Um, you may not find three. You may only find one. You may only find two. But whoever you submit, it will, it'll be you that will pick those people to represent your district because you know that district better than anyone else. And then there will be two at large, which will make up the seven. The two at large can be appointed by the judge executive. So that keeps the board seated as people that the fiscal court has chosen. It's not a board that can operate independently and not stay with the purpose of helping the county. It wouldn't be self-serving. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't turn into a road board or whatever because it would be your selections. And the bank account has been set up. All we need to do is just uh, let, let you know and there is one district, and it's uh, Larry Morphew's district, that the person couldn't continue that originally started with us, that we will need an appointment as soon as possible to that, to serve that one. And as those rotate, and, and it's in the bylaws, I've got each of you a copy of the bylaws. And you can look at it yourself and see when your district will be coming up for those nominations. And uh, hopefully we can get some funds in and get some things going where we can help out some of the people. And I wrote the 501c3 broad enough to where it wasn't so defined that we had ourselves painted in a corner where you can only use it for a certain thing. Um, I think this was the 32nd 501c3 I've written, and I've written 37 now because I've wrote some for other local organizations. And I know really pretty well how, how they should work by now. And there's different ways we can get funding to come into that, donations and so forth, and other ways that we get it to come in. We don't actually have to work for it, but it'll come in automatically. And then the board will decide how that's distributed to the people in each of your districts as they need it. Yeah, good deal. Uh, keep those back to you as soon as you can. What, you, what happened is the last time we had a tornado, all this money was coming in. We didn't have, so we used the, the city of Beaver Dam. That's what we set up. And we went through town and first. This, this will have our own. So we did, we found out that we were down there when we were there. Thank you. This is just something else to help the citizens of Ohio County when time and need. We, we don't need it very often. It's, you never know. You just never know. Yeah. Um, it can help also out if uh, you have somebody coming through that's even homeless or yeah. needs to be put up a night or there's a family needs some meals for a night. It's broken, written broad enough. But okay. We can use it for those things. We don't. It don't just have to be a natural disaster. That's good. It's just the needs of the community. Appreciate Jimmy. Uh, okay, we're ready for Manchester's comments. Michael. Uh, no comments from the first district at this time. Jason. I, I, I should have done this on the committees, and I didn't. Okay. But I, I've got a committee, weight scale committee uh, motion, and uh, the motion reads uh, on the weight scale, move category assistance, attendance, meal drivers, those three, and combined with custodial, general labor for courthouse, community center and golf attendance. Um, require department heads review employee progress at no earlier than, <coughs> excuse me, my voice, than 30 days, but not to exceed 90 days for pay grade L2. If department does not recommend to move to pay grade L2 at 90 days, then a written documentation must be submitted to the judge, executive slash payroll as to why the employee is not eligible. All right. Basically, what you're doing here is you're combining 
Ann, do you want to explain that a little bit about as far as combining? Well, the, the lowest we had was $11, and they've got a few jobs open now that they just can't get anybody to even apply for. So basically, it's just combining it with the next level up. To seek more yeah. applicants, to get more applicants. Can I put that in the form of a motion? Second, second by Kenneth Callaway, and I'd like Kenneth serves on that uh, <coughs> committee as well, Jason. So, Did you choose the effective date? Let's do the effective date. Did she tell me to choose? Is it okay? We just go ahead and do it now. The effective yeah, date. Yeah, The effective date is on there as of uh, 30th. April 30th. That's this Sunday. Okay. Sorry. Any discussion? We have motion second. Any discussion on that? Questions? Being none, I'm first say aye. Opposed, like sign. I thank you, gentlemen, because we don't want to get, uh, we actually had people in a few categories, not many, but these few that were working for uh, way down, I mean, very, very low grade pay. So we've increased those that were left behind, so to speak. Uh, Okay, uh, then uh, Bob. You got anything? Oh, uh, no, sorry. Not this one. Thank you. Him and nothing in the time. Larry? I don't have nothing, Judge. No, Judge, thank you. Anybody in the audience got anything for the good of the body? Hearing none? I really, really, really thank all of you tonight. You've done a lot of work, made a lot of hard decisions, and we appreciate it very much. And. Uh, We'll adjourn and see you back in a couple of weeks.